Yeah, so Heroes of the Storm started out as a very small map project inside of StarCraft II. We debuted, we were about to launch Wings of Liberty, the first StarCraft II game, and we were in June, right before launching in July, and I think I had a discussion with Dustin about what are we showing at BlizzCon in 2010. And very quickly, a, a few teams worked on maps, and one of those maps was at the time called Blizzard Dota, and it was mostly focused on StarCraft II heroes. We went, we got some positive feedback, we also got some constructive feedback, and we went back to the drawing boards, worked on it, and debuted again in 2011. And in 2011, we showed a map that, uh, at the time we called Blizzard All-Stars, and it was now beginning to transform into a game that was cross-franchise, cross-worlds, um, fun, you know, we we're trying to emphasize that, but it was still a, a map inside of StarCraft II. And we got, once again, positive feedback, constructive feedback, and realized that, you know, this needs to be its own thing. And uh, from 2011 till now, we've been working on making it its own fully realized product. It now sits on the same platform that StarCraft II is built on. It's its own product, though. It has its own business model, technology, these things built up to be what Heroes of the Storm is going to be. Along with those changes, we further went into emphasizing the the crossing of worlds and uh, renamed it in honor of that. We feel like the hero's name uh, emphasizes he Blizzard Heroes, which is what we really wanted out of it. And that's where it is today. That's what we're showing today at BlizzCon. Um, you know, I think part of it was we, because it was just a map inside of StarCraft II, it really made sense. Those are the, we had Raynor and we had Kerrigan and we had these different heroes already. So it made it, it made it easy to do and it f felt right at the time, but it did keep our thinking to a little more limited. Um, we really broke out of that mold at the 2011 time, but even then, if you look at the art, the style, how much we embraced it. I was really clicking Blizzard over into thinking, and our team into thinking, this isn't just going to be a small little thing. This is going to be a big, we're really going to push this. It's, it's a product. It is its own fully realized product. And I think that's it. It wasn't late as much as it was embracing that this is, that we want this to be a big thing. We want it to be bigger than, it's not an afterthought. It's a real, it's a, it's its own fully realized product. So. Heroes of the Storm is a game that focuses really on three primary things. Epic Blizzard Heroes, uh, fun, fun with friends, and finally Battlegrounds. And that all comes out into uh, a package of a variety of these battleground encounters that you and your buddies get together and, and play in. And we want to emphasize that variety. We want, uh, we want players to not focus on very specific builds that they, they have to do only this thing, but the, the most fun, the, the best way to play the game becomes jumping into different situations and reacting to them using these heroes that you have an affinity towards, the heroes that you like the best. So, um, you know, for, for now, the way that's playing out is getting into these we have four battlegrounds that we're showing here today uh, a couple of them just to show one is a uh, blackheart's bay it, f it focuses on captain blackheart he's a ghost pirate and his band wants these doubloons these coins um, while pushing on enemy fortifications both teams are trying to push on each other's enemy fortifications you're also focused on collecting coins and delivering them to captain blackheart and it creates this very different type of gameplay where you he, by getting these coins to Captain Blackheart, he will turn his, the cannons of his ghost ship on the enemy fortifications. And it, it's a very big deal. It does a lot of damage and it allows you to push on the enemy fortifications much better. And so players are now focused not only on the traditional things you've seen in the style of game, but also on this other aspect. Um, and one, using that as an example, players, uh, players, as they collect these doubloons, these coins, if you kill those heroes while they're carrying them, all the coins spill out onto the field. So every one of the heroes, especially the ones carrying the most coins, become these targets. Um, and that gameplay gets really fun. Standing near Captain Blackguard as he's waiting to collect the coins, it just becomes a pool of dead bodies as everybody's trying to get in there to get this to happen. Meanwhile, strategically, you can choose to ignore that if you'd like, and your team can still continue pushing on fortifications that way. So it adds a lot of variety to the decisions and strategies that you're trying to play. The other example of a battleground that we have there today is Cursed Hollow, and Cursed Hollow features the Raven Lord, and the Raven Lord is looking for three tributes. Um, if you can collect three of these tributes, he will curse the enemy team. 
And the curse is very impactful. It shuts down all the towers and it all of the minions that are, are being spawned have one health. And so you, you can you can basically landslide uh, for a period of time and he does it for maybe a minute. Um, but that one minute is very effective. So the, it, that is a big deal, but even the collection becomes a big deal. So as these tributes randomly spawn on the map, the first one spawns, and maybe you make a decision that you're not going to worry about it right now, and your team's going to continue to push a lane. Um, later on, as the team next team gets two, you don't want them to get three. It becomes a very big deal. So these team fights escalate and happen around whether whether this third tribute is going to be gathered. So that level of um, kind of craziness in, in Battlegrounds is just the beginning of what we want to see uh, and continue to push in Heroes of the Storm. So that ultimately plays up to this variety, this this differences and challenges that you and your friends can hit with these epic Blizzard heroes. Um, so we, as far as how many heroes and how many maps we're, we're trying to have at launch, we, we don't, aren't targeting a, a particular number. We're showing 18 heroes here today um, and four battlegrounds. I think uh, this, and this is very much not a commitment at all as much as a guess. I think we'll probably have about double that number of maps at uh, the, the time we go into open beta. But the, the point is to continue to deliver variety in the game across time. So we're not, it, it's not about a specific target number. And then as far as heroes go, we're, we're not trying, once again, to hit a specific number. I think these are big he deal heroes. We want them to feel uh, like they capture the essence of, of their roots. You know, Arthas feels like Arthas. And that it's a big deal when these heroes come online. So. If, for us, I think a less is more approach. We don't even have a number, but we're, we have at least another 10 back at home that we're actively playing with. Um, and I'm sure we'll be adding a few more over time before we get into open beta. Heroes of the Storm is a free-to-play game. It will have a microtransaction system. We're not going into a lot of the details, but I can say that um, right now, the way we have it set up is, is based on player levels. Player levels unlock different bits of content to you as you play through. Um, you earn currency as well through this. Uh, right now we're calling it gold, and that gold allows you to buy things like additional heroes, additional skins, additional mounts, additional uh, powers and stuff for your, your heroes. Um, I'll get, I know I'll get this question when I say powers. Um, there is no plan to allow players to buy power. There is uh, some discussion right now about allowing players to um, access to different variety. For example, heroic abilities in the game. As you play, we'll take Arthas as an example. He has a couple of heroic abilities. One is Cinderagosa, who does a very uh, line damage fr freezing attack. Uh, his summons his dragon, and he can do that, or he can summon these frozen ghouls that are really powerful and will help push uh, the lane. But they're very different in their uses, and players will have access to one of those things, maybe two, but we may bring on a third online and whether you have that other option will be something that you would unlock as you play through the game. Yeah, I definitely get this question a lot about what about the other um, players in the market, the other games in the market, and we're really trying not to focus on that. I mean, there's a We've always, Blizzard has always moved into a space that's been arguably crowded. Um, we've just done this with Hearthstone as an example. Hearthstone is a card game. The card game market is a pretty crowded market. There's a lot of, uh, especially in, when you talk about mobile, there's a lot of digital card games already out there. How can we move into that market and, and be okay? We're not, we don't even look at that, I think. We, our focus is on what's the card game we want to play? What is, the, what is the Blizzard's version of a card game that we're having fun playing? That's exactly the same thing with Heroes of the Storm. We are trying to make the game we want to play. We've it, A lot of the elements came through games we've made in the past, um, and we want to bring sort of our spin on it and not feel like we have to be beholden to a genre as much as uh, making a game that we really have a fun time playing. Great question. I As far as what's next for Heroes of the Storm, we're 
We're, we are focused on trying to get this right, but there's so many possibilities. The, the idea of the nexus, which is the, this collision of uh, dimensions and universes hitting together, allow us to do things like the Raven Lord that I talked about, or do things like um, Captain Blackheart, but also visit Azeroth or visit, visit Sanctuary, the Diablo world, um, and even invent uh, or go back to some of the classics that uh, Blizzard started with. Maybe we'll see some Lost Vikings things. So there is... This is going to be a game that continues to build and build and build over time. More and more fun will come online. More and more variety will come online. And we can go to any world and in any situation we want. So there's, there's so much potential to do uh, more. Detected.